Hello and welcome to Sick Notes. My name's Ed Hope. I'm a junior doctor in the UK and this video is a continuation of my look at the medical scenes and medical science behind the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now I've already looked at Iron Man and the Incredible Hulk and I did Doctor Strange a good few weeks ago. So on to the next one is Iron Man 2. I'm also going to do a bonus one and look at Thor as well because there was only one kind of medical scene that I thought we should take a look at from that. So let's crack on with it. <laughs> so we meet Ivan here, the show's villain, and show his motivation as well, that his dad's died and his dad was cast away from Stark Enterprises. And it's a nice little touch here. We can see at the side of the bed some ice cubes, often what we use when people are at the very end of their life and they don't have the energy to eat or drink. They can still get quite a dry mouth. So we can have these little sponges we can use to help wet the mouth for comfort, or we can also use some ice cubes as well. So someone's done their homework there. Facilities for mankind. So we see Tony's back and he's using a finger prick blood test to get the levels of palladium in the body. And we see this technology used at the moment, most obviously in diabetes, so we can get the blood sugar levels so people can monitor it. Wake up, Daddy Sean. Welcome home, sir. Blood toxicity, 24%. It appears that the continued use of the Iron Man suit is accelerating your condition. Okay, so this is... Tony's getting some poisoning from the palladium that he's been exposed to from the arc reactor. So he's had 10 months exposure to the palladium and the toxicity levels in the blood and the body are rising. What is palladium? Well, it is a real element, atomic number 46. It has no biological function in humans unless you have an arc reactor in your chest. Because it's quite rare, we don't learn anything about its toxicity at medical school. So I've had to do a little bit of research and it doesn't appear to be too toxic, although Tony is getting through a fair amount. In the first Iron Man, we find out that Tony needs 1.6 grams of palladium for the first arc reactor. Need at least 1.6. And he gets through quite a few more reactors. In this movie alone, we see an extra three more used. Toxicity is described using the term LD50, the lethal dose that would cause 50% of people exposed to it to die. So we use that because some people may be very susceptible to something and some people may be very resistant to something. So it gives us an average exposure of the toxicity of that drug. The LD50 for a rat taking palladium intrathoracically, so via the chest like Iron Man, is around six milligrams per kilogram. So if we scale this up, assuming Tony is a big rat, and calm yourself. the toxic dose would be around 612 milligrams. So this means around one core is about three times the toxic dose of palladium. And it's worth noting that not all the palladium would be getting into his body. So this kind of range that we're talking about here definitely stacks up. So definitely would be giving him some symptoms. So looking up what palladium toxicity does to your body, it's known to cause liver disease, tissue changes in the gut, kidney and lungs, as well as being a carcinogen, so causing cancer. Hey, I'm thinking I'm busy and you're angry about something. Do you have the sniffles? I don't want to get sick. So we see he's concerned about Pepper Potts having a cold as well. So although not explicitly stated in the toxicity of palladium, damage to the liver and kidneys can cause problems to your immune system. So Tony is right to want to avoid anyone with a cold. I need you to wear a surgical mask <coughs> until you're feeling better. And we saw a subtle hint to this earlier as well because he didn't want to receive a letter that had been handled by someone else as well. Maybe, maybe that's because he just doesn't like it or maybe he didn't want to catch something. We have already awarded contracts yeah. to the wind farm people. Don't say wind farm, and I'm already feeling gassy. <laughs> And we hear here, this could be evidence of some gut problems. And finally, the most visual thing we see here are these kind of weird, torturous, black distended veins around the arc and in his neck as well. We get engorged veins in liver disease, actually. This would only happen in the abdomen, so not in the chest and not in the neck, so that's definitely not it. And these don't look red or angry or infected. They just look very black and distended. So probably most likely something like varicose veins that you 
see in the legs normally. And these are engorged blood vessels because the valves in the veins have been damaged. So therefore all the blood sits in them. So maybe the palladium is actually damaging his blood vessels, damaging the lining, meaning he's getting these engorged blood vessels. That's <laughs> my best guess anyway. Why won't you let me? Have you been drinking? Uh, chlorophyll. <laughs> So Tony's been drinking chlorophyll to try and combat the symptoms of the palladium poisoning. I get, a f I get a feeling he's not a fan of hospitals in the first film, not wanting to go in after being injured in the desert, and this one doing some kind of alternative therapy because chlorophyll isn't anything I've ever seen used in medicine. To remind you and myself really, chlorophyll is a green pigment found in plants uh, that is responsible for photosynthesis, so converting light into energy. That's where my knowledge of that ends. <laughs> it's not used in medicine, but you know, possibly in some alternative medicine, I don't know. I guess it shows how desperate Tony is trying to treat his symptoms. I have bigger problems than you in the Southwest region to deal with. Hit him. <laughs> oh, God, you're going to steal my kidney and sell it? Would you please not do anything awful for five seconds? Okay, so uh, Nick Fury's got some pretty good medical tech over at S.H.I.E.L.D. He's able to get rid of these distended veins in the neck, so treat some of the symptoms of the palladium poisoning. Again, we get this <laughs> intramuscular injection in the neck. What is the deal with that? Um, it could have gone anywhere. What'd you just do to me? What did we just do for you? That's lithium dioxide. It's gonna take the edge off. We're trying to get you back to work. Okay, cool. So they've given him lithium, We've probably all heard of it in batteries or the Nevada song lithium. It is a, a drug that we use in medicine to treat bipolar disorder. It's uh, a metal, atomic number three, and you know, when people are on it for bipolar disorder, we do need to monitor their blood tests as well because it too can have toxic side effects. So it's definitely not a treatment for palladium poisoning. In fact, lithium can also damage your kidneys like we found out about palladium. So <laughs> wouldn't be recommend doing this drug regime. Lights coming to you. Great. Pepper. Are you okay now? I am fine. Don't be mad. I will formally apologize when mad. I'm not fending off a hemorrhoid attack. Fine. <laughs> Nice little hemorrhoid gag, having worked in uh, lower <laughs> GI surgery before. I appreciate that. So this is an interesting thing I spotted actually. So Mickey Rook, who plays the villain in this, Ivan, his fingernails here, can you see they look quite curved? What I'd suspect is clubbing. Now, if you've had fingernails like this your whole life, that wouldn't be anything wrong. But if you you actually acquire this, so over weeks or months, then this can be a sign of sort of serious underlying disease of the lungs, the heart, or even the GI system as well. It's Agent Romanoff's assessment of you. Read it. Uh, personality overview, Mr. Stark displays compulsive behavior. In my own defense, that was last week. Prone to self-destructive Tendencies. I was dying. I mean, please. <laughs> and aren't we all? Textbook narcissism. Agreed? <laughs> so narcissism is where an individual has a high opinion of their appearance or self-importance. Um, it comes from the Greek mythology of a figure who fell in love with his own reflection. Narcissistic personality disorder is in the DSM-5. I'll just pick out a few of the criteria that applies to Tony. So a grandiose sense of self-importance. The I don't know expo why you're... is your ego going crazy. <laughs> Although Tony is pretty good. A preoccupation with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, a belief that he or she is special and unique. Wow, look at that. That's modern art. A need for excessive admiration. <laughs> sense of entitlement. A lack of empathy. Our collection, considering the time that I put in, over 10 years curating it, that. It's a tax yes. write-up, I needed that. And a demonstration of arrogant behaviors or attitudes. I mean, it's pretty much anyone on YouTube, actually. Tony Sart does display all, if not most, of these things at various points. Um, people with narcissistic personality disorder um, often find it hard to maintain long-term relationships and more likely to abuse substance as well. Next up, it's the debut of the God of Thunder, Thor. Only one scene to break down in this one after he gets run over by Jane Foster. He ends up in the hospital. Just taking a little blood. 
How dare you attack the son of Odin? I need some help. I need help. <laughs> So this is something that every medical professional can probably relate to in some way. I've seen a few of these things play out, not never quite this extreme, but it's pretty scary when, you know, someone becomes very aggressive and starts being violent. You are no match for the mighty. <laughs> So they give him an intramuscular injection. Finally, it's in the right place. Plenty of muscle there rather than the neck. This kind of chemical sedation is never normally this quick. And I'm surprised as well because you think Thor being a god, his body would actually be able to deal with it even better than us. But most importantly, we wouldn't ever chemically restrain anyone in this situation. This is a matter for security and for the police. The only time we would is if people are aggressive and agitated as a result of a medical condition because then we're treating a medical symptom and not taking away someone's freedom. So there you go, just some thoughts on the medicalish scenes from Iron Man 2 and Thor. If you enjoyed this, then please subscribe because I'm gonna be doing Captain America next and the Avengers in one video to kind of end the first phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And if you can't wait that long, I've also done Iron Man, Incredible Hulk, and Doctor Strange already, so you can check them out. A few thank yous, firstly, to Callum, Jake, James, and Tom for helping me make this video. Thank you very much, guys. And finally, as always, to you guys, thank you so much for your continued support. All the likes, all the comments, all the shares, you continue to blow me away. So thank you. I'll be back soon and I'll see you there.